colors can be the key ingredient that makes or breaks your design. But how do you actually go about creating the perfect color palette? Today I will take you through some of my favorite techniques that I have used to create beautiful illustrations, brand identities and print design. We will also learn about practical color applications like using Pantone colors or converting colors from one profile to another. Color affects all of our creative work. So I've put timestamps in the description so you can just jump to the section that feels most relevant to you. We're gonna cover color theory, color profiles like Pantone, Hex, RGB, CMYK and SHB, creating palettes, accessibility of colors and some color tools that I find super helpful. Let's get started. First up, let's talk about color theory. You might have heard about terms like complementary colors or analogous colors. This is all based on the color wheel, where the idea is that colors on the opposite side of the wheel have a stronger contrast and therefore complement each other very well. That is why we call them complementary. If we instead want to have a more harmonious design with colors that look similar, we can go for analogous colors. In color psychology, different colors are often seen as evoking certain feelings in most people. For example, blue is often seen as trustworthy and calm, while orange stands for innovation and energy. This is why we often see large corporate companies use blue and marketing companies use orange. While it can be helpful to think about the psychology behind colors, I do think there are so many other factors like culture and the competitive landscape that can affect which colors are the right choice. For example, in many Western countries, red is seen as an angry color, and many companies decide not to use it as part of their brand colors. In many Asian countries, however, red represents good luck and happiness. Now let's talk about color profiles. When you open your design tools, you might have noticed that you have different options for color profiles. As you create your document, you can choose between RGB and CMYK. So what do these stand for, and where do hex codes, HSB, and Pantone colors come in? RGB stands for red, green, and blue, and it shows what amounts of these three colors that you need to combine in order to get the color that you want. For example, in the case of this blue shade, the RGB values are 39, 153, and 255. Since it is a blue color, it makes sense that the blue has the highest number, followed by the green, and the red has the smallest number. RGB is used for digital applications and has a wider range of colors compared to CMYK, which is used for print since screens can show colors in a different way from print. CMYK stands for the different print colors and are also combined to create one shade. C for cyan, M magenta, Y for yellow, and K for key, which is black. The same blue shade has the CMYK color 68, 35, 0, and 0, since it has a lot of cyan, which is a blue shade, and some magenta since it's skewing a little bit more towards the purples, but no yellow or black since it's a bright color without green tones. Because colors come out very differently in print and digital applications, we always want to make sure that we're working in the right color space when we create a design. Here are a couple different shades and how they look in CMYK versus RGB modes. Because brands often want to have the exact same shades for their print across any applications, Pantone created set colors that use a process called spot printing. This adds the exact shade to the CMYK printing process and you can be spot on with your color. That means that different print facilities can use the exact same shade and get the exact same result every time. Not all printers offer spot printing and it can sometimes differ in price compared to traditional CMYK printing. On Pantone shades, you will also see either a C or a U. This stands for coated or uncoated, and it represents how the color will look on coated or uncoated paper since the finish can affect how the color prints. Up until recently, Pantone had a collaboration with Adobe, where you can convert and use Pantone shades directly in Adobe products as part of your Adobe license, but they recently moved to a separate subscription, so now you need to pay a separate monthly fee in order to use Pantone colors. For brands that use Pantone colors for their print, Pantone has a tool to convert these shades to digital versions like RGB and hex codes to get the most exact conversion. Hex codes are actually just a translation of RGB. Since hex codes only have six numbers and each of the colors red, green, and blue can have a range between 0 and 255, letters are used as a way to represent double digits. Hex codes are a nice shorthand that most design programs, including website builders and tools like Canva, rely on, so they can be quite helpful as a way to quickly identify a color. So now we just have one left, 
HSB. Even if you've designed for a long time, you might have never actually thought about HSB. It's not as standard as the other color modes, but it can actually be quite helpful. HSB stands for Hue, Saturation and Brightness. Hue basically means that colors are arranged along the 360 degrees of a circle, and the number you choose dictates where in that circle that your hue color falls. Next up is saturation. You can think of it as 100% being the brightest version of the color and 0% being gray. Lastly, you have brightness, and in this case, you will get different results based on the saturation that you picked. A fully saturated and fully bright color will show as a bright version, while as a less saturated and bright design will look closer to a white shade. HSB is a much less used tool, but if you find it more intuitive to think of colors in terms of brightness and saturation, rather than the amount of red, green and blue, you could give it a try. Next up, let's talk about creating palettes. Now that we know all the color terminology, we can move on to actually creating our palettes. When I create a palette for a project, I always start with the mood. If it's an illustration, it can be as straightforward as looking for warm, forest-inspired colors for an autumn design, or light green, yellow, and pink shades for a spring design. These are colors we already associate with a season or feeling, since they have been widely used before. If I'm creating a color palette for a brand, I want to make sure I refer back to my brand strategy and I think about what competitors are doing and how we want to speak directly to customers. For example, if I work with a client in the hotel space, where all competitors use purple and have a focus on luxury, but my client wants to be seen as younger and more affordable, I might look at brighter shades and colors like yellow or green that feel happy and inviting. Once I have a general idea, I look at design inspiration to see if I can find hues that I like. To create a palette that works practically, you need to think about how the colors are going to be used. One of the most common mistakes I see is using all bright or all very muted colors, because this makes it really difficult to create hierarchy. I like to start with one main brand color, and then add a second color that can be used for backgrounds, typically either a very dark or a very light color, so we can easily create contrast. And finally, a third color that we can use for accents to draw attention to items like buttons. Many designers find that the 60-30-10 rule is really helpful for using color in this exact way. It means that you have one color that makes up 60% of the colors that we see, one that makes up 30%, and one that is only added in with 10% as an accent. Having such a limited color palette can help us stay focused, and the design doesn't have to get too busy. Another good rule to keep in mind can be to mix in both cold and warm color in your palette. If we have all blues, greens, and purples, it could get a little bit under the sea themed while all reds, yellows, and oranges can get a little bit overwhelming. If you haven't added in a neutral in your palette yet, I think it can be a great tool to create more dynamic designs. A very light gray, a soft beige, or a stark black can all be perfect for a neutral footer or as a way to divide up a design into sections without adding more bright color. Now onto accessibility. Color is such an interesting topic because we all experience color in different ways and multiple different ways throughout our lives. As babies, we mostly take in high contrast colors and black and white, since our eyes are not fully developed to see all the colors and the focus that adults see. As we grow, most of us can start to see more shades and as our vision gets worse, we need more contrast again. When we pick colors and create palettes, we always want to consider how the colors will be used, not just what they are. For example, can you combine all colors freely, or are there certain combinations that work best? Are there some colors that should be used for text and some where the contrast is too low? To figure this out, there are some really great tools out there. So let's jump into tools. For accessibility, I highly recommend the tool Accessibility Checker. Here you can add in your background and text colors, and it will let you know if the contrast is good enough. Adobe also has a very similar tool called Color Contrast. I also want to mention some great tools for creating palettes. The first one is called Colors, and what I love about this palette generator is that you're able to quickly generate new palettes, but you only see one at a time. If you're anything like me, it's easy to spend so much time looking at hundreds of palettes, and this way you can lock colors that you like and get suggestions for the remaining ones. The second color palette tool is Color Hunt. Here you can find new and popular palettes, and I really like that you can search by themes like season or type of business. Another great tool is to use the mosaic feature directly in Adobe Illustrator to create color palettes from a picture. Just click on the image and select Object, Create Object Mosaic. 
Now you get large squares of color and you can use the eyedropper tool to create your palette. I hope you thought this was helpful. If you still have a burning question about color, make sure to ask me in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your projects and see you next time.